Hi. So this is a demo of the new silent HFI methods in the VESC beta firmware. So if we go to the firmware tab, we can see that we are at beta 40 of firmware 6. And this is a VESC 6 Mark 5, or a beta version of the, or a test version of the Mark 6, but it's more or less the same as 5. So I will start by reading the default config and writing it back. And then we can go to FOC. And on the advanced step where I am now, uh, I will just increase the zero vector frequency slightly because we're going to run a vector at half of this frequency or two vectors at the full frequency and then we get the component at half the frequency which can be audible if this is too low. So 32, half of that to 16 and that should be fine. I can also point out you don't want to increase this one too much. I think 34 or 35 is the limit currently because at that point you're not going to make it make the PVM update in the same interrupt and then you make it the next one and this will mess with the measurement so then it will not work. So 32 is a quite good number. And then we go to general and make a regular detection. Apply and write. I can also show I have the 160 kV cramp motor here and I have the 12 S7P battery pack. And I'm using the battery pack now and not the power supply because I will feed some power back as we will see later. And then we have to have something that can uh, sync all of that power. So, a quick reminder of the old HFI method. So, that one has this one has been around for. I think one and a half a year or so. And if you use this one, uh, let's do a bit less current. And I hold the motor and I switch on current control. You can hear that it's beeping quite a lot, but we have full torque at zero speed, so we can track it all the time. But the sound is quite annoying. And the reason for that is that in this case, we're doing injection in the alpha and beta frame. And we're doing 16 different vectors, and then we're using all of those vectors to figure out where the inductance is, or um, look at the shape of the inductance in order to figure out the rotor. And uh, when we're doing HFI, then we're actually taking advantage of the fact that uh, some motors have a bit of a difference in D and Q axis inductance. And uh, then the inductance in a given direction will depend on the rotor position. So one clue if this is going to work, if this has a chance to work well, if this is if this D and Q axis inductance is uh, not too small compared to the total inductance, then it is has a good chance of working. And most outrunners tend to work. So if we want to make it silent, we cannot inject all of those 16 vectors. So we have to pick one, actually always pick two vectors, because if we only pick one single vector, then we're going to generate some net torque. So that's why we have two vectors, and that's why it runs at half the zero vector frequency. And there are a few choices you can make, and yeah, I have implemented two of those choices, and two variants of each choice. So we can start by the 45 degree version. And if the exact same thing now, let's make this one a bit smaller. We can see we still have full tracking. It doesn't cog at all and we cannot hear it at all. So this is completely silent HFI at zero speed. Another thing I want to point out, if you go back to the old HFI method, and we do, for example, duty cycle control, and I'm doing that to not spin up the motor too fast, and I slow it down with my hand, and we look at the current down in the right corner. You can see it works here, but now it starts to struggle a bit, and here it will not really work anymore. And the reason that this happens is that we drive the motor into saturation and uh, that will make the induction shape change a bit and then this method doesn't keep up anymore with that. Now the interesting thing with the 45 degree version is that it actually takes advantage of the saturation if you pick your vector correctly and you also pick the sign of the vector correctly then you can make it so that when you start to saturate the motor in the Q-axis, and you get this misaligned, and you're going to be pushed back to the right alignment, if you choose the vector correctly. So let's write this again. 
do the same duty cycle. Now hold it, we have the full 60 amps. It's really difficult to hold it now because it's so torquey and it doesn't have any problem at all. So that is quite impressive. Now we can actually do more than 60 amps, let's try 100 amps. I've only went to 65, I don't have enough duty here. Let's do 10%. The full 100 amps, and I can barely hold it now, it's really difficult to hold it. But it tracks perfectly all the time. And have used this, I'm using this on my kick scooter now, and uh, I cannot really tell that the motor doesn't have any sensors. It works as good or even better than hall sensors, because we have a bit more resolution in hall sensors. And I also compared it with an encoder, and I think even if the inductance is a bit off at full load, we tend to get within 10 degrees or so. So that is really working well. Now, one disadvantage of this method is that it is a bit dependent on getting the inductance right, because you have to, uh, where you do the, where you inject the vector, you're kind of relying on having about half the, uh, that you know half the inductance, so you can tell if you are off to one direction. So now when we have it correct, and I say I do two amps, you can see that it works well. I'm doing a low current now because then we don't get to take advantage of the saturation. Now if I decrease the inductance a bit or increase it, let's increase it to 35 micro and instead of 30. That's still working. 38. Now it's not working anymore. And the same thing happens if you are too low in inductance. See, I think I changed this one a bit too. So if you go down to, say, 24, same thing will happen. And that means that the inductance is a bit off, and sometimes the inductance measurement is not great. And if the LD minus LQ inductance is low compared to this one, then it's even more sensitive. So if you see that happening, then you can try to tweak the inductance a bit until it works. Uh, I think my scooter had to decrease it a bit because it tends to overestimate the inductance a bit. Now, there is also another method, and uh, that is called uh, uh, coupled HFI. And this one does it a bit differently, so instead of doing the vector between the D and the Q axis is that the, does the injection in the D axis and it measures the response in the Q axis. And the interesting thing if you do it that way is that when you are aligned you don't get any coupling from the D axis to the Q axis and as soon as you are start to get misaligned then you get the then you get some response from the D axis injection in the Q axis with a sign that depends on the direction of the misalignment. So that means you don't have to remove the offset, so this one is much less sensitive to the absolute inductance. So you can see when we have it correct, it works. But even if I go down to as little as half the inductance, I mean obviously things are not going to work as well, uh, equally well on high speed and so on, but even half the inductance it's still stable. So that is a big advantage of this method. Now we'll do apply to get it back. Now, one big uh, one di disadvantage of this one is that it doesn't work e as well when you start to saturate the motor. So when we do 60 amps, it's kind of still working, but it loses it quite a bit sometimes. And if you do more than 60 amps, it doesn't work equally well anymore. But if you do more less than that, then yeah almost still 60 amps but here like 40 amps that's no problem at all so if you don't need the full torque then this method might be a better choice because it's a bit more stable now i can also mention that the v0 and v7 version they only work if you have phase shunts because uh, it relies on getting a current measurement in v7 too and if you don't have that then it can only do the measurements half as often and then they will not be silent anymore so if you do this one again, then you're gonna get 8 kilohertz in this, no, 
16 or 8 kilohertz in this case and that can still be quite annoying so in this for this method it's really an advantage to have phase shunts and if you don't have them then you can select either of these two and they will behave the same and with uh, phase shunts then this one will do it twice as often so then you don't get an audible noise there now let's do a position control demo so let's go to PID controllers and by default I mean usually I always have to tweak them but I kind of set them up for a motor like this one or a similar one but that was with an encoder and if I have an encoder then one position control revolution will map to one mechanical revolution but in this case it will map to one electrical revolution and this is a seven pole pair motor and then the gains will be a bit off and we will have several stable revolutions in several electric ones and one mechanical revolution so in order to work around that we can do the position division angle and set it to seven for this 14 pole motor and then one position control revolution will correspond to one mechanical revolution the other thing i want to do is i also want to decrease the gains of it because it doesn't work as well as an encoder, so I have to go down a bit. Actually, it does work with the other one, but it tends to be a bit noisy. So let's go down to this much, set the derivative to 0 0.0001, and I will also increase the KD filter a bit. And let's try position control. Now you can hear another problem with this method that I also want to mention. And that is that when you are around uh, zero current, then you have to, or when you swap the sign of the current, which you're going to do all the time now in position control mode, then you also swap uh, the sign of the injection vector in order to work around the saturation. And that is the beeping that you can hear now. So this other method doesn't have that problem. So then it's uh, completely silent. And if you need the more work and you're going to use this method, you can also work around it a bit by going to HFI and set a bit of current hysteresis. So let's do 5 amps. And then we don't have this issue anymore. You can hear this clicking a bit when I do more than 5 amps in some direction. So that's when we subside with the hysteresis there. You can also change some other things there, so if you have more inductance then you have to probably increase the injection voltage by quite a bit. And you can also play with the gain here. Now, another thing I want to show in this demo is that uh, it does work really well even when you go to full speed, so uh, let's push it a bit by going to 80 amps. and go to position control again and change it a bit, say maybe 200 degrees or maybe zero even I think we got the fault code there yeah, you might see if some of those fails filter fault codes in this beat there because I have added the fault for that uh, Still, I'm still probably gonna fix it uh, the reason for that fault is the, the fault happens when you have very heavy acceleration around zero because then the phase fil the filtered voltage doesn't keep up with the modulated one and if they deviate too much I generate the fault there and that also helps if your hardware doesn't have field filters and and it tries to use them because someone uses the wrong config uh, yeah but anyway so let's go to say 90 degrees maybe 180 270 again yeah so now at 270 degrees you see that we have uh, this reflection here on the motor and we have the text that you can use as a reference and you can see that the n in the trampa text kind of aligns with this edge of the reflection so to do now to run it i will run the motor to full speed or i will start by doing some duty side control and changing direction and so on and then go position control and then you will hopefully see that it goes back to exactly this position and this is interesting on this motor because we have the position division angle and this means that we have more than one stable position, one more than stable electric position for this mechanical position, meaning that if we had a two-pole motor 
and we lost tracking of the motor and pick it up again, it will still go to the same mechanical position, but this one will not. So it will only go back if we never lose tracking in this demo. So let's give it a try. Duty. And perfect. A bit more duty. Perfect again. Let's go to full speed and try that. And perfect again. So that is really impressive because we are going at full speed and then doing full brake, get the full current at the 80 amps, tracking the position perfectly all the time, and then doing that all the way down to zero. Uh, let's give it 80 amps current, then doing minus 80 amps going through zero, and then go from full speed in reverse to zero to this position again and see if we can get back to where we started. And perfect. Also got the fault code there again, but that will be fixed soon. Shouldn't be a problem if you run less than 80 amps either. One have seen it when I run really high currents and don't have any load in the motor so it accelerates fast. Now, one thing to point out here as well is that it will track the position as long as you have some modulation running. So if you go to rotor position and do PID position, I think it's already on that. And I do full break, for example. That means that we're still modulating the motor, so then it will still track the position. But if I release the motor with the stop button or setting zero current, then it will see it starts drifting. And that is because we're only using the observer now and uh, it's not moving, so if it's having a back EMF, we're just looking at the back EMF. And if we start moving it again, it will kind of pick it up. But we might have lost one. Uh, seventh or some multiple of sevenths of the revolutions now so let's see if we lost actually we're back to where we started but usually that doesn't happen so this will work well if you are having if you have the mo modulation on the motor all the time so let's try a few direction changes again reverse forward reverse forward full current stop. Perfect again. So that is really impressive from this method. I didn't even think this was possible with the uh, HFI.